for giving us health and strength, for giving us the gift of life. Thank you, oh Father God, for having protected us throughout this day in whatever, uh, wherever we were doing and whatever we're doing uh, from danger seen and unseen. I pray now, oh Father God, that as we, as we um, learn once again from your female servant, um, the different home remedies, oh Father God, that uh, from that you have um, made for us, so that we can we can uh, cure. We don't have to take the the pills and all of those things, oh Father God. But there are natural ways of doing things, and for which we thank you. And uh, we thank you, Lord, for what your female servant is going to teach us. So help us once again that we keep it not to ourselves but that we tell each and every one about these wonderful things that we are learning so that, you know, Lord, that uh, others may be drawn and therefore this is a way we can also do outreach and reach everybody. So I thank you for this knowledge. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. 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 How, how are we doing, screen? You want a screen share today or just practice? Um, you want to share screen? I'm trying to see where you guys disappeared to. Okay, one second here. Um, no, you, you, you want to share screen today? Yes or no? Uh, well, I'm going to show the demonstration here. So no, we don't have to share screen for today in terms of this. Okay, that's good. Anyway. Yes, but I want to know, do we have our dear sister Margaret with us? Doesn't look like, I don't know. Maybe not yes, yet. Yes, I see at 347 So it could be that we do. So wait until, oh, yes, I see her hand raised. Okay, that's good. I just don't hear her um, audio. I'm here, I'm here. I am, oh, but I was on mute. Okay, that's great. That's great because we're looking forward to hearing a little bit from you. Uh, today, you can give <laughs> us a little and everything like this, you know, so that we could learn. And uh, Sister Karen, just before sister margaret does share you said that you have a question sister sure i was speaking yeah. to one of you do you have any natural remedies for cramps as in yes female cramps you're speaking for menstrual cramps yeah yeah, yeah. it's for one of my um nieces okay i was speaking to her today in jamaica okay well, you know what happened? There's quite a bit of different things that can be done uh, for yeah. cramps. It all depends on, um, of course, what's available in our territory and also what is at the root. Because it's very important for us to always find out what is the root cause for the person's um, situation. You know, okay. because there could be, um, does she have a condition that um, yeah. she has? That she's I suffering from? Think she has fibroids. Right, know. right. Because some people have that, and endometriosis as well is another very painful thing. So it all depends on what she is suffering from. Mm -hmm. But for menstrual cramps, um, mm -hmm. yes, uh, there's different things that she can uh, do. I mean, in terms of, in terms of that, I could give you a little. He, I could give you a little, some remedies off of that in a little short while, uh, okay. while sister is also looking for that, you know, but I know that uh, some people have found, I'm going to tell you, some people have found um, the castor oil is mm -hmm. excellent, you know, for cramps, but also in the treatment of fibroids mm -hmm. and so forth. So the thing is, I'm going to give you some things on that shortly, because for her, there are different herbal things that she can do as well. But if she has a fibroid issue, that's mm -hmm. a whole protocol. And I could put that um, uh, in a presentation it, by itself, Sister Karen, believe it or not, for the fibroid. Okay. All mm -hmm. right. Yes, but no problem. So uh, Sister Margaret. Can I add something to a question? Yes. I, I remember I asked the doctor about that once. Uh, he said exercise is very good too. When you have cramps, keep exercise every day. It's going to help you a lot. Because all the blood, all the muscle, muscle they move and it's helpful. 
Yes. And also you see, also you see in her situation, she would need to um, really look and see what she's doing to purify her blood. You okay. See? Because what happened, there are different formulas that can be used for that. Like for example, the red raspberry. It's amazing when it comes to painful menstruation. Oh, yeah? know, um, yes, the, the, um, the red raspberry, um, you could buy it in an herbal preparation and use that, but also this herb that is called uva ursi. I don't know if you ever heard of that before. No. Okay, but there's also the black cohosh. And black cohosh is very um, powerful when it comes to uh, the female condition period, you know, when people have, uh, you know, heat, uh, hot flashes and so forth. Um, yeah. And everything like that, yes. You know, so like when you have red, red raspberry, there is also the black cohosh, there's the chamomile as well, mm -hmm. the ginger root and so forth. So um, there's different things that she can do for that. But also uh, for her, uh, we don't know if she has um, any kind of excessive bleeding as well. I don't know that I don't know. Right. I'd be very interested to see what uh, her, her situation is there, but okay. I would tell you that definitely in terms of the, um, those go-to herbs that are very helpful, the red okay. raspberry, the black cohosh, the ginger root, the chamomile, and the spearmint, and that uva earth, as I mentioned to you. Uh -huh. Okay. okay. So that, that is uh, very important. So I hope that's a little helpful until such time that we could actually treat that as a topic because believe it or not, that is a topic in and of itself. Okay. Okay. Thank Perfect. you. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. And uh, I'd like to, you know, call on our dear uh, sister at this time, Sister Margaret. Um, yes, if you could share with us uh, that which you have to share with us in terms of how we can grow some herbs in our home. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> one minute, I'm going to go outside. I have all my plants outside because yes. it's easy to have them outside and inside. Some plants stay outside for the winter. <laughs> This is the big leaf thyme mm. that I just break piece from, like, let's see, like there. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Like from the joint there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll put it in water. And if you put it in water, it will catch root. You can plant this any time of the year, but you will have to keep this one inside for the winter. Is that Chinese thyme? Yes, what we call Spanish thyme or, or big leaf thyme. Okay. Wow. They look extremely healthy, sister. <laughs> yeah, because I have them on my step. And this here is my lemon tree. Wow, nice. That nice. I grow from a seed. Uh -huh. okay. wow. And I give the neighbor some leaf to make tea and stuff with. So that's why uh -huh. you see new, new leaves coming out. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Nice. Give them an outside and it's cold. Yep, no, those go inside. Those, and we all know this one, right? Oh, that's an inter. Uh, yeah. Tiger lily. Yeah, this is an yeah. air purifying plant. You can keep that inside for the winter. Mm -hmm. What is that one called again? I'm not sure, but we, <laughs> I'm we not sure what they call it. Lily. That's a name, yeah. We call it tiger lily in Jamaica. Okay, okay. tiger lily. Okay. Yes. Thank you, sister. That, that girl's like uh, weeds back in a home, man. Everything is in plant, but you know, sorry. Mm -hmm. Everything is in plant, but nothing is in the ground. Mm -hmm. You see the big plant, but this is lemongrass also. Okay. okay. I just buy the piece from the supermarket without the root and put it down in there. 
and it mm-hmm. actually grow. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I cut off all and I share. I like sharing. So mm-hmm. I give the neighbor the majority of them from a, the top part. Mm-hmm. But yeah, what I do, I just get it up, <laughs> make sure it's moist and then stick it down in there. Mm-hmm. And water it every two to three days. This is the fine leaf time. I put mm-hmm. this here from so the um the squirrel will not go on my plants and sit down in it or whatever. Yeah, I know, mm-hmm. not eat it. The fork will choke them. So mm-hmm. this is a, this is the fine leaf time. Sorry okay. that you can see it a little better. Yeah, because yeah, this is in the night. Mm-hmm. And basil. Okay. Oh. Wow, they look healthy. Yes, they're looking yes, very thank good. Thank you. Yeah. Like and I said, everything you, is in plan. Very pot. tasty. Yes. <laughs> how did you start off your basil, sister? The basil could grow by seed or it could grow by piece. Someone gave me a piece and I had it in the fridge for two days and then I took it out of the bag and I just stick mm-hmm. it in the dirt and it got, it get catched. Oh. Wow. Yeah. I say someone did something to my... Um, chocolate mint but you see it looks dry up but mm. hopefully it will catch up it's sending out a new little plant there That's right now cool there. Mm-hmm. chocolate mint so what about those forks inside there what's going on there that is so the squirrel will not dig up the dirt <laughs> <laughs> okay so that really does help yeah with the forks mm-hmm. yes because if they jump in to dig up the dirt it will poke them in the in the tummy <laughs> wow. My tomatoes came in late. Mm-hmm. Oh, and this is hyssop. This is what mentioned in the Bible. You can use this to cook with, make tea, and you, you could use it as a seasoning. Sorry, my hand was in front of the mirror. I mean, mm-hmm. camera. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it's another little purple flowers. Mm-hmm. Okay. Almost Sorry. look like time. This is a dill. Mm-hmm. This is a dill tree with a lot of dry seeds so that I could pick mm-hmm. and plant back for next year. Okay. Yeah, I don't do any special thing, you know, because I don't add any thing to fertilizer. it. Fertilizer. Yeah, I just buy regular fertilizer. Mm-hmm. Plant it. They uh, make a hole and then plant the plant in it. This one is spearmint. Mm-hmm. And most of all, I have the rosemary. Mm-hmm. Rosemary is very important, especially yes. for mm-hmm. respiratory health and so forth. That's one of the ones that are excellent to keep in your arsenal of natural remedies. This one stay outside for the whole winter. Snow mm-hmm. will fall on it, everything, and it do not dry up. Mm-hmm. Rosemary. This, yeah. This, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, oregano. <laughs> the oregano stay outside too for the winter time and it don't dry up. Wow. But this, the, this, that, the uh, rosemary and the pine leaf thyme stay outside during the winter time. Mm-hmm. So your winters aren't very, where are you? Are you in? Brooklyn. Okay, so you don't have, all right. So you don't have no minus 40 degrees then. (laughs) No, no minus 40, no minus 12. Okay, so maybe that's why it's surviving because I don't know that it would survive here. This one is what they call, well, we call it warm bush in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you can boil it and mm-hmm. make tea with it. It helps the kids for the, with the worms. Okay. Also, the Spanish people cook it in seed. Well, they use it as a seasoning and stuff. Oops, my battery ran out. Okay. Well, sister, uh, Mar- Mrs. Margaret, I want to say thank you very much for sharing that. We are sharing because we we care to about the health of one another and Mm -hmm. uh, you know what is really important and what i love about um 
knowing about God's health, it's not something you just talk about. It's something that you apply in your life. And we see mm -hmm. that you uh, live, <laughs> you know, live to actually uh, grow his pharmacy in your home. <laughs> yeah. But some of, them, some of them, Sister Margaret, you don't tell, tell us how you use them. If you oh. use them once a day or so once a week, how you use some of them? You, you okay. make tea of everything you make tea yes. with them? You can make tea with everything for the, with the rosemary. I use the rosemary for my hair and for tea. When, when I pick the rosemary, I just pick a piece off. Mm -hmm. okay. And I do not um, use sugar in my tea. I drink my tea plain. So, okay. yeah. Oh, um, also you can soak it in some olive oil and castor oil and um, sweet almond oil. And you can leave it for hair growth also. Okay. It's a warm, my, my mom says it's a heated thing. So, I don't know. Okay. Yes. Yeah, when I saw Margaret, she gave me a concoction <laughs> for, <laughs> for the hair. And pepper. <laughs> yeah, um, the concoction for the hair. It yes. Very good. And you know what? It, I don't know, but whenever I put it in different oils, well, we're not talking about next time you talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> you see, everything you can make basil tea, you can make the pepper leaves. I pick some of the pepper leaves and I put it in my spinach if I'm making spinach. Okay. Because okay. it's healthy too, and it's not a hot pepper. This is a sweet pepper. Okay. The lemongrass that we talk about, they use it with cooking, like to give the pot flavor. Mm -hmm. But also you can make tea with this. Mm -hmm. That's true. The lemongrass is different from the fever grass? No, the it's the same. It's just different. It's just a different name. Because I, I'm hearing that the fever grass is good for COVID also. That's what they say. What, one, what works for one might not work for the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why it's important to know all, well, know as many options as possible because what you said, sister, it's so true because you could run and tell somebody, oh, this worked for me. And when after they, they uh, would try it, it would not work for them. Mm -hmm. And why? It's because the way how our bodies, um, I call it our health, the health terrain of our bodies, uh, all of our healthy cells or or our genetics, or all those different um, uh, compositions, uh, our circulation could be different. Any one of those variables could be different, and something that worked in somebody else won't work in us. So uh -huh. that's why it's very important to know very different uh, type of um, solutions. And in applying them, you try one, you try the other, and you see what can work for you. So to know that, we have to try them. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And that's the reason why that's very good. And sister, was there any other thing that you want to share with us, you know, in terms of what you, uh, like, how long have you been doing this? <laughs> uh, apparently about three oh, years, I have this one too. Now. I have this right. one. <laughs> okay, you could show us after Brother James. <laughs> I have this one. Oh, the aloe vera. Yes. 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 Because there are two types. There's that big leaf one, and then there's this small one mm -hmm, in this mm -hmm. plant in this part here. I don't have dirt with this one. This just grow with a little bit of water every two weeks. Uh, mm -hmm. But this is the leaf. This look like the tiger one because it have mm -hmm. white spots on it. Mm -hmm. Ma but I don't. Margaret, that is not the one that we call ratchet at, at in Trinidad. No, ratchet is flat. Oh, okay. Ratchet is a flat thing, and also I try in my hand at um, orchid, <laughs> the orchid plant. Wow. Mm. Well, I try a little of everything, you know. Whatever you can save. I have um, lychee seeds and hot pepper seeds that I put to dry there for next day, of course, spare my life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good, that's good. The plant. You have a natural pharmacy there. <laughs> Trying. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. 
Well, you know what happened? This is the difference. This is what our far, our, our medicine cabinets is supposed to look like, <laughs> you know, okay. filled with all of these different kinds of things because we are in this time. I mean, right now, um, you know, as far as Sister Margaret is concerned, you know, if there is an emergency that happens and so forth, you can actually help yourself right at your home and you don't have to even get in your car and go down the road to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's what's wonderful about having, um, you know, growing these things in your home. And it's great that you are growing them uh, all year round, some of them, which yeah. is which is wonderful. This is my concoction with the rosemary in it. Yes. Okay. So what is it that you have put in there as ingredients, sister? Ingredients? What I did, I took coconut oil, olive oil, and I boiled carrots in it. I grate the carrot and boil it. Then I strain it. And then I add fenugreek to it, fenugreek seeds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I add the rosemary to it and I have it soaking hair to use for my hair or for my skin. Oh, wow. Yes. But I made something over the summer. Sorry, not to mean to cut you. No, that's good. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably very excited. Something and I tried it out. I took coconut oil and I boil it and I add um, junks of aloes and I cook it down. Uh -huh. And I use it on my skin this summer. Uh -huh. But I use it in the 90 degrees and stuff. It's So maybe only Sister Annabelle can talk about your skin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Pastor, her skin, her, her skin and hair. But you see, she um, she she has a mixture in her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you don't think it's only the herb, Sister? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she has a she has a touch of something else in her. You see that? <laughs> Let me go to let me go to the source. I'm gonna ask you, Sister Margaret, since you oh her phone cut out there. Oh, the phone is Sister gone. Margaret. Oh, oh. Maybe the battery, the battery. She's gonna come back. Maybe the battery is dead, huh? Yes. Yeah, probably. talk about you know when oh, we're yeah. when we're talking about the creams with the heavy this and that in it and all of the chemicals honestly it's only coconut oil i use on my skin honestly yeah yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. i ever since we've been speaking about that i don't even on my lips i pass that mm -hmm. i'm not using the lip seal or the this or the that it's the coconut oil i use to moisturize my lips honestly mm -hmm. yes and the coconut oil, that's what you want to use, you know? I met a lady, I met a white lady on um, Jade. So I was asking her how her skin, her skin is so soft and nice. So I asked yeah. what to use on her skin. She said she has never used anything else besides coconut oil. Imagine uh, that. And the Indians, the Indians in Trinidad, they use coconut oil from day one with their babies. They mm -hmm. you know, love their whole bodies and they use it all the time and their skin is really smooth, you know? It is good. I've never I used know. lotion on Alden. Even myself, I don't use lotion. I use coconut oil on Alden when he was born. For his hair, for his mm -hmm. body. <laughs> I don't know if I, I'm doing right. But... Is... Well, you know what happened? Coconut oil, it is amazing. Uh, in terms of its um, applications, there's so many different things you could use it for, because you could use it. Oh, here, sister, Hi, sister Margaret, we got you back again. Oh, is it I got you back on my phone, not my iPad. My iPad is oh, still boy. reconnecting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. The sister had a question for you. She was in the middle. Oh, I was asking you, um, you know, in terms of what got you started to use these products on your your skin oh because um i don't know growing up home in trinidad i used to always use vaseline and stuff i ate the raw aloes because i i do the aloes for cleaning out mm -hmm. 
And then I look at YouTube and I see they start using the aloe vera for the hair. So I start using it for my hair now. Okay. And the question here, because your sister accused your um, the benefits <laughs> that you've been enjoying for your hair to your genes, right? But we want no, that has nothing to do with my genes and um... <laughs> well, guess what happened? I said we have to go to the root. So I was saying that we would ask you. Uh, what is your, um, what would you say uh, is, has been the condition of your hair before you started using these natural um, applications and after? Can you tell us about that? Okay, well, before I used to perm a lot because I, at 12 I started to press and from pressing I went on to perm. And from perm I went to Jericho and from Jericho, sorry. But I just get tired of doing, putting chemicals in chemicals. my hair. So I just decided to go natural. And a night in 2012 or 2011, I came home and I just took a scissors and I cut my hair down till one inch. And after that, I started to use the shea butter. But a girl mm -hmm. called Natural 85 on YouTube, she mm -hmm. shows how to make the shea butter with a little bit of a, you're whipping it like if you're mixing cake with the cake mixer. You right. put a little bit of coconut oil, a little bit of lavender oil, a little bit of rosemary, a little bit of ling ling or yang yang or whatever mm -hmm. the name is mm -hmm. for hair growth. So I mix that and I used to put that in my short hair and then twist them. Wow. And you saw what? the difference in your hair growth. Yes. yes. Yeah, but, but at the same time, she has some Indian in her hair. So that's it, my mother, not me. <laughs> my dad is Negro. My mom is Negro with yeah, little quarter if, if, if you see her hair, her hair is, you know, you could so that's every that's part of it too. <laughs> well, you know what happened? I'm gonna make a test because I'm in between hair. I cut off my hair a couple of months ago. And I'm gonna make a test, um, Sister Margaret, of your formula to my hair, and I'll mm -hmm. get back to the group. Yeah, me too. I'm gonna do it. Yes, I will test it out. You know, because I don't like to use any things that are not natural in my hair. You know. I have a question. So, so um, you said, sorry, I was just gonna ask you. So you said you boiled the coconut oil and the aloes. Yes, what I did, I cut up the aloes in pieces, mm -hmm. and I cook it in there. I cook it in the coconut oil until the aloes itself gets crispy. Mm -hmm. But with the oil, you'll find a difference in the oil. The oil will get thick, like if it's olive oil, like if it's pressed olive oil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you do that, you, you let it turn it, you turn it off after it, the aloes get crispy, and mm -hmm. you let it cool, and then mm -hmm. you can put that in on your skin skin alone. But if you're going to mix it for your hair, you have to put it separate for your hair. For your hair, you can mix it with a little bit of amla oil to give it a smell. Mm -hmm. Also, you can mix it with a little bit of olive oil or vitamin E oil. Okay. So you could get the pure vitamin E oil from Amazon. Or oh, another thing I'm using on my hair right now, beside the aloe oil, I give my hair treatment once a month with Moringa powder. Oh, an egg, some mm -hmm. coconut milk, and some oil, a moringa, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. moringa that's powder. That's mm. a good thing. Well, I know that, sister. I'm going to call you and try to write down these things because I will. You know, we have to taste and see that the Lord is good. The Lord tells us to taste it. He tells us to apply it. And, you know, not just discuss it, but actually put it in practical use and prove him, try me and prove him. And so uh -huh. we can rise to that challenge, you know, and uh, give the feedback and also be the evidence, you know, to, to God's goodness in a little while mm -hmm. from now. So yeah. I don't know how many people want to join along with me <laughs> to try these different kind of things. Because, yes. You know, yes, because I said me. Yes, and I would as well. And we have a natural coach in our dear sister Margaret, you know, that Thank can you. help us with that. And brother James, how come, you're not, 
How come you're not chiming in here, Brother James, just so that you will try it? <laughs> Thanks, Sister Adele. I have a question. <laughs> no. For me, I, I have a question too after Sister Adele. I need to know what else I can do with aloe vera. Because this is a, this is a question. Is Dr. Oz, is Dr. Oz um, said it, and I'm trying it. Dr. Oz said, um, because I, I hardly use anything on myself, on my skin, because Dr. Oz is saying that, he said it once, that it, it's best not, if you can, it's best not to use nothing on yourself. Because he said a lot of those things that we put in our, on our skin, they have the chemical in it. And mm -hmm. then it's best not to use nothing if you can, but you might age a little more. <laughs> You might age a little more because you, you might have more wrinkles and those things. But I hardly use anything on my skin. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. Yes, I believe you're doing the right thing because I have to make a confession. I was addicted at one point to always creaming my hands, sister, creaming my hands all the time. And you know what happened? My children were saying, Mommy, you're always addicted. You're always creaming your hands all through the day and everything like this. And you know what happened? They had said, mommy, why don't you do for your hands what you did for your lips? Because it was about six, six or seven years ago. No, six years ago, I decided not to put any chip chapstick on my lips or lip conditioner or anything like this, because I was literally addicted to putting these things on my lips. And I said, what's going to happen, you know, when it's going to be a time when we won't be able to, to get lip balm and all these kind of things, what can I do? And so I decided that I was going to just put lemon water on my lips and, and that was it. And did you know, my skin went through a horrible change. My lips were always chapped and all those different kinds of things. And it took me about a year and a half for mm -hmm. my lips to actually come off being addicted to having lip balm. So that's how deep rooted these chemicals could get in our system to the point mm -hmm. where our natural oils in our skin they'll stop uh, producing because they'll become, will become dependent on those different kinds of things. And so, yes, your skin can be addicted to actually the chemicals that are there. And your skin at that point uh, could stop producing the natural oils that are in it. But, but haven't you noticed something that when we go to the Caribbean, how our skin is so nice and moist, we don't have to put right. anything in it? Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's um, very smooth. Yes, and so um, moist, you know. But I think it's the dryness in these um, countries, especially uh -huh. during the winter. Yes. Yeah. And the vitamin D down there, too. They have all, they, the natural vitamin D. Right. That's it. Sometimes, but we also sometimes I use a lemon water, sister. Um, Alicia is saying, or a little soda. Maybe I shouldn't even use the soda water. But sometimes I just I use nothing. <laughs> Which, uh, you know, I was just following what Dr. Oz was saying. And I um, said, so, you know, let me just try these things. Mm -hmm. The lemon water is excellent. It's mm -hmm. excellent for the skin. It's it can take the too. Yes, it's <laughs> excellent, you know, uh, for the skin. You know, so I want to say, uh, yes, Brother James. Remember last time we said any things that we cannot eat, that cannot go inside, <laughs> that we should not put it in our body. That's um, right. That's right. Yeah. And you know what happened? I don't know about you, but I grew up in a family that um, before we would go out the door, my mother would just get a dollop of Vaseline and put it on <laughs> her hand, and then she'd, she'd put it on, no joke, she'd put it on my face and everything like this. And you know what happened? I started doing that with my children when they're young until I got to learning that it's toxic, you know, to put that petroleum, you know, byproduct on, on, on our skin and so forth. And so I had to find different um, alternatives. So Vaseline is something that we want to get away from as well. And what we can use, you know, um, is we could use lemon water and just put it on our skin. Whenever I want my face to clear up, right now my face is no example right now because mm -hmm. I have a nasty habit of um, 
of uh, that uh, cause markations on my skin. But when I want to clear it up in a couple of weeks, you could check back with me. I would just use lemon water and it would just clear up my face. It's mm -hmm. excellent for that. And it will give your face a shine. So if you want to shine, instead of doing that toxic, you know, application, and I'm going to tell you, it's not just my family. I got to finding out that a lot of Caribbean families, that's what they do. They, they, they go and they put this Vaseline on and they'll just put it on their face. We're, we're not alone. Well, I'm, 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 I did it as, as a kid growing up in Trinidad. I used a lot of Vaseline and never get sunburn. Never. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I grew up with the Vaseline. That's what I know. But then the Vaseline back then to the Vaseline now is two, two, two different, different type of Vaseline. Exactly. You know, it's not it natural anymore. It's mixed. It was coconut oil for us. <laughs> no, but it's you can make your own coconut oil. It's not hard. I mean, it's a lot of hard work, but you can make your own coconut oil. Lisa, I don't know if you know black seed oil. Which one? Yeah, black seed. seed. So we use that. I use it on my skin. If you okay, have, black seed oil. Wow. It can be taken yeah. internally. Cause we, I use, we use that this at home sometimes. We drink it like um, just a little in warm water sometimes. They say it's cure, it cures everything, like everything except death. I mean, that is what is on the internet. Okay, but they say well, you know, is that is that the um that's the black seeds, right? Black seeds. I yeah. know that the Muslims they use that a lot. I know yeah. that we had to use that for my son's um, <laughs> asthma. It's excellent for respiratory conditions. Yeah, and yeah. also, yeah. this lady yeah. she uses it for to help her lower her her blood pressure. Yes, that's it right. It is good for everything, cancer too. Yes. Sometimes I use it on my skin. I mean, okay. internally, okay. so it goes, you can use it internally or externally. What, so. what you think about olive oil? Can we use olive oil in our face? Oh, yes. You yeah, can yes. use it. Or, that's olive right. Olive oil is good too. Yeah. Yes. You see, the things with the oils, what we have to really look for are the cold press extra virgin oh, oils yeah, yeah. you know we want to make sure that they're cold pressed cold extra virgin press. oils. but that's great for the skin if you mix up um you know we could actually have a lotion seminar yeah, that, I need a lotion thing here. yeah we could do a lotion seminar that we could actually see these different things because you know what happened what is amazing about what sister margaret has done that we can integrate also in our lives and i'm glad sister hamilton and pastor hamilton you do this too and Sister Karen, you started doing that as well. That's the greatest thing we could do because what we don't realize is our skin is the biggest organ in our body. Uh -huh. And so what happened is that um, when you want to do aggressive therapies, sometimes that are, that are natural, you don't give it to a person orally because they would have to go through the digestive process and absorb and it would slow everything down. When you uh -huh. want something to be administered very quickly, guess what you do? You put it on the skin. Okay. Because it's called transdermal therapy. And this is what they do with smokers. They just give them a patch, put a patch on, and that delivers to them the dose that they need to help them to um, handle their nicotine, their nicotine addiction. And mm -hmm. also, even as a strong, um, uh, as a strong, uh, how can I say, what do you call that again? Imagine uh, a contraceptive. They actually put a patch on the woman's arm, whether it's Dipro Provera or whatever it is. And what happens is that that medication is delivered uh, like right immediately into the body, right? Oh. So that's to tell you how powerful uh, mm -hmm. an organ our skin is. Mm -hmm. and, and what happens is that uh, there are reports, and I could show you lots of reports. You could go and look at it yourself about parabens. That's P A R A B E N S, parabens. Mm -hmm. You could go and look at this on uh, internet. And that's just one toxic uh, ingredient in these lotions and these different hair products and so forth. Uh, but what happens is that uh, they're known carcinogens. And um, I don't know if you guys know of um, Walter Weith. Yeah. Yes. His wife almost died because of some uh, something that was in a lotion.
that she was putting on and she didn't even know that. And since then, she started making her own natural lotions like what Sister uh, Margaret is doing, her hair products, all these different kinds of things because she nearly died because of a, something that was in the lotion. So this mm -hmm. is very serious. And mm -hmm. why is it serious? Is because it doesn't kill you. Well, in her case, she could have died, okay? She's an exception, okay? Mm -hmm. There are people like her that, yes, it could kill you like that, but it doesn't kill you necessarily instantaneously, but it can kill you over time. Why? Mm -hmm. Because of what they call the cumulative effect. What happens is, is that it causes a buildup, a buildup, mm -hmm. and what happens before you know it, a little, um, in, in that little exposure, it won't kill you like that. But then after that little exposure just increases over time and just builds up. And then next thing you know, it goes to uh, over the threshold for what is considered to be non-toxic. And that's why the Food and Drug Administration, they'll say, oh, this is a negligible amount, a neg negligible amount. But the, the, the truth is it may be a neg negligible amount for today, but in a, a year or 10 years from now, it's reached um, this toxic level. And so when we decide to do what Sister Margaret is doing and growing your own things and applying them and making your own concoctions, as she calls it, and applying it to the hair, what happens is that you are safeguarding yourself against that uh, accumulative effect. And it makes sense, you know, because if you... Um... If you go natural, uh, uh, because you, you might be allergic to a lot of things that you don't know. So when mm -hmm. you go natural now, mm -hmm. it's safer when you go natural. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. So I have, I have a question 